Welcome to Sports Weekly with Ayaz Memon. Hello and welcome to another episode of Sports Weekly with Ayaz Memon. It's a very, very happy episode as we celebrate a lot from around the world and nothing more than India's massive triumph at the Thomas Cup. Uh, we also obviously have a roundup of the IPL and how it's now moving into its final stages. Who's going to be the final four? It's a big, big question. There's still some matches to be played, but uh, there's at least three teams in contention for the remaining one or maybe two slots. Uh, we also have a big football roundup with the FA Cup. Liverpool beat Chelsea for another title. Uh, the EPL race may have just gotten a little tighter with West Ham holding the Manchester City Marauders, but it might just be a sliver too far for Liverpool. We'll have Samuel Arora with all of those updates. Uh, before we start, here's a reminder to subscribe and rate us wherever you get your podcasts. To subscribe, head over to Spotify or Apple Podcasts and remember to rate us anywhere you see some stars. Helps us improve. Let's get started with the show. Welcome to the show, Ayaz. Thank you, Mr. Fantastic. And it's been an absolutely memorable week, if I might say so, for Indian sport. The Indian men's badminton team winning the Thomas Cup. Now, lots of people have asked me and everybody's, of course, rejoicing. But lots of people have asked me, how does this compare with some other achievements that we've had in uh, in Indian sport? And I think it, it stands alongside uh, the 1983 World Cup and the 1975 World Cup win. One, of course, was in hockey, the 1975 inaugural World Cup hockey tournament, which India won under Ajit Pal Singh. And then the 1983 Cricket World Cup, where India beat West Indies uh, at Lords. That, that was the team captain by Kapil Dev. So it stands alongside that. So I'm not you know, humming and hawing here. I think it's amongst the most remarkable feats achieved by in team sports. I mean, I'm not comparing it with Abhinav Bindra's gold medal or, of course, even Neera Chopra's gold medal or many achievements of P.T. Usha and some of the girls from Kerala in the past. But where team sport is concerned, this ranks amongst the best and the highest. Absolutely. Well, it was... Uh... It was a very interesting tournament for India, something, a tournament, in fact, in which they never made it past the quarterfinal stages. I mean, a quick recap is they finished second in their group, having lost only to Chinese Taipei. They went on to beat Canada and Germany very easily. And this brought them face to face with Malaysia in the first of the knockout stages, which uh, they won 3-2. Next was Denmark, another 3-2 win. And that brought them face-to-face with the most successful team in the history of the Thomas Cup, Indonesia. And to win that final 3-0, I think, is a tribute to a lot of effort that goes on behind the scenes, isn't it, Ayaz? Of course. And you mapped the process and the progress so thoroughly that, you know, it's self-explanatory. That you come and you've never won, you've never gone beyond the... Uh, you know, made any headway in the Thomas Cup earlier. And I remember, Mr. Fantastic, several conversations I've had with... Prakash Padukone, and then later with uh, Apulela Gopichand. And they always emphasize this. They said, listen, we won the All England title. Prakash won it, and then Apulela Gopichand won it. And there have been uh, Olympic medalists in Saina Nehwal and P.B. Sindhu. But they always emphasize that if you win the Thomas Cup, then it gives you an idea of how strong Indian badminton is. It's not about one player winning something, but it's about how the sport is, is uh, you know, the status of the sport in the country. And here we have this win was memorable, of course it is, but it highlights the strength and depth of badminton uh, in, in India. Today, India is a superpower in badminton. They've broken the hegemony of the Chinese, the Japanese, the Malaysians at different stages. And now, of course, even the Indonesians. To beat Indonesia in the final of the Thomas Cup, as I mentioned earlier, is one of a kind achievement. I can only say that. Absolutely. And just to go over the final, I mean, Kidambi Shrikant rounded it off with an unbelievable straight sets win over Jonathan Christie. But for me, the real turning point was how Lakshasen battled after being a set down in a very close second and third game. Uh, but also how Sattvik Sai Rajranki Reddy and Chirak Shetty saved match points in that second game against Mohammed Hassan and Kevin Sanjay Sukamulyo to give India that 2-0 lead. You know, uh, finals like these are all about momentum and had that match point been converted by the Indonesian pair, who knows what would have happened. Absolutely. And I was reading in the newspapers, Prakash Padukone actually saying that this was the the vital win, the double spare of uh, Chirag Shetty and Satvik uh, Ramki Reddy pulling off that memorable win. You know, I mean, Lakshya Sen has been on a roll over the last year and he's been doing extremely well. So too, Shrikant Kadambi. 
these guys are acknowledged players on the on the international circuit but for the double spare to win this and it it really turned around the whole you know the fate of the thomas cup in my opinion but one guy who we must not forget we must mention him is hs pranoy uh, mr fantastic so he didn't play in the final but in the earlier two ties which india had to win to get into the final he was a crucial factor and i think you know i i've been seeing videos of how the the other players all the, all the everybody in that squad celebrated when pranay pulled off those wins was something to behold one more person before i forget is of course vimal kumar who is the coach of the team and i can tell you again vimal kumar who i know for more than a quarter of a century since he was a player he is the most selfless coach i have met in my life you know whatever the discipline you can think of he has been such a mellow personality below the radar always just you know persevering with his task of finding nurturing mentoring youngsters and making them into world beaters it's not a sudden development that this has happened there's been the prakash padukone badminton academy where vimal kumar has been working for a very long period then there's the gopichand academy in hyderabad where gopi of course has been the the big boss there's also the badminton federation's official kind of uh, you know academy so to speak and vimal has been associated with both as coach as a coach at some point point or the other and he's been part of the indian team coaching them he has been relentless in his pursuit of getting these guys to excel and i thought that you know his, his presence there made such a big difference i was overjoyed to see him there uh, and also again he was not exulting he was not doing cartwheels but i'm sure he must be the most delighted man going around today in the badminton world absolutely and so are a lot of indians a big 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 round of applause moving on to the ipl we've seen some really great matches but it's all really come down to the last five or six remaining games now uh, there's a delhi versus punjab match coming up which could just set up a really really tight final round of games the gujarat titans are more or less through i mean they are actually confirmed of a top 2 finish here i i honestly just worry about whether they've peaked too soon other than that i really can't find too many flaws in their strategy or in their performances uh what do you think ayaz will it be the dc or the punjab team that has a final shot at the remaining uh, knockouts place That's a million dollar question it's a do or die for both teams one of them will get ahead in the tournament the other will be knocked out or eliminated but you're right about gujarat titans that's the only worry have they peaked too early you know what i feel about gujarat look t20 anything can happen it's sometimes it can be a lottery but they seem to find a man for every situation whether it's a david miller or a rahul tevatia or a rashid khan or hardik pandya himself or saha out of nowhere he comes and he's become one of the finest openers in the tournament and then they've got shami who's been taking the most wickets in the in the power play and they've got lucky ferguson and they've got you know i mean they find some player or the other to put up his hand and take the team through so uh, they are certainly in the in the playoffs in fact they'll finish in the top 2 so they'll have two shots at uh, you know getting into the final in case if they lose the first they have another chance lucknow super giants suffered a setback against uh, uh, against rajasthan royals and you know and they've lost two matches in a row before that also they had lost a match so it's affected their chances they are stuck on 16 points and so that's a precarious situation to be in because other teams could possibly catch up those 16 points with you know some more match a couple of matches more to play they could still get, you know they need to win one more i think to get get ahead because their run rate is superior but it's, it's still leaving a lot to chance i think that rcb royal challengers bangalore it's a must win match for them uh when they come up uh, they've got a couple of days break they're on 14 points they could qualify even on 14 which means the others have to fall apart uh so all in all this is becoming a, a quite a melee isn't it apart from gujarat titans i still think that lsg lucknow super giants should go through but hey everybody is waiting with bated breath especially the players and the captains and the coaches well here's the thing about uh, lucknow super giants and you mentioned they've gotten themselves into a bit of a challenge they have 16 points they faced the kolkata night riders in their last game uh the delhi capitals are on 12 points and let's assume that uh, delhi does beat punjab in their 13th game and then they face off against mumbai which you'll have to say delhi will be favorites given all the form issues that are there with mumbai that actually puts delhi at 16 points with lucknow should they lose to kolkata and then run rate comes into the picture and delhi is not too far away from lucknow so lucknow is not assured of a place yet i think not yet not yet but uh, you know i mean look it's been a till the last two games they looked a rock solid team maybe not as much flair as rajasthan royals 
or as much of you know exhilarating performances that Gujarat Titans have put up, especially in run chases. But they were always there. They also are a team of great all-round strength and depth. And uh, you know, KL Rahul, a man in glorious touch, some fine bowlers in their ranks. They've also, I think, to me, it looked like the best managed team in the sense of how do who do you send out to bat at what point in time? How do you what bowling changes you make? It all seemed like they were playing to a almost a flawless game plan and then suddenly things go wrong. And I watched a video where Gautam Gambhir, who's the chief mentor of the team, was talking to the players and he was quite upset. He was admonishing them for their kind of lose performance in uh, in one of the matches. I think it was against KKR. And he said, listen, this, you know, you don't mind losing, but lack of intent is going to hurt in T20 because T20 can be very, very cruel. And I think that they didn't take it seriously enough and they lost the next match. So, they have a, you know, they have some ground to cover in the sense of not about talent, but about regrouping and getting their focus right. The other major concern here, or the team that could really play truant uh, for a couple of others, could be the Sunrisers Hyderabad. They have two games. They could win both, not make it through themselves, uh, but completely throw the plans of uh, some other teams off track. They could. And, uh, you know, I mean, look, Sunrisers Hyderabad, the rise and fall in this tournament has been one of the most fascinating stories. I mentioned this earlier, I think. They're on a five-match losing streak. as Yeah, I mean, before that, they were shocking. on a five-match running winning streak. So, they've been, you know, going from one extreme to the other. They started off poorly, losing a couple of matches. Then they hit a hot streak, five matches on the trot. Umran Malik became a household name, bowling 150 plus, 150 kilometers per hour plus consistently. Then he had a barren smell, spell. And they started losing match after match after match. They lost their last match too. So, these five defeats on the trot. The only consolation was that they had Umran Malik back amongst the wickets. So, is that going to make a difference when they meet, you know, Mumbai or in their remaining two matches that their main strike bowler has got amongst the wickets? It could be. But I think what has happened for them is they have a very good pace attack. They don't have a very high quality spinner apart from Washington Sundar who's been in and out. And it's their batting which has become a problem. Because Abhishek Sharma and Rahul Tripathi have taken on the responsibility and done a magnificent job. But Aiden Markram, Nicholas Puran and especially Kane Williamson, their OC stars, haven't really delivered or lived up to their promise. And that's really what's hurt Sunrisers Hyderabad. I think it's Kane Williamson, you know, who has been the biggest, uh, well, letdown or disappointment from a Hyderabad point of view. Because pretty much, pretty much, Mr. Fantastic, like Virat Kohli for uh, Royal Challengers Bangalore and Rohit Sharma for Mumbai Indians, just can't get find. You know, the ball is not finding the middle of the bat at all for any of these players. I can even add a couple of other names: Aaron Finch for uh, KKR. And if it's not purely a batsman, look at what's happened with Kyron Pollard: no runs, no wickets. And he's finally been dropped. We spoke about this yeah, the last he's been week. Finally dropped. So I mean, the, <laughs> to use an immortal euphemism from Ravi Shastri's. Uh, lexicon, they all seem to be brain fried, not just Virat Kohli. <laughs> well, this definitely does promise to be a very, very exciting uh, week of action coming up. Can't wait to see who the final four are. And uh, well, I know who I'm rooting for. Who are you rooting for? Well, I, you know, I really fancy Gujarat Titans, so they are already there. RCB, just, you know, it's, it's because it's been a very Intriguing journey that they've had. Their best batsman, so to speak, has been completely out of form. Made virtually no contribution. That is Virat Kohli. And yet, they're on the verge of being in the playoffs. That means something has gone right for them. We know what it is. It's Faf Duplessis. It's Dinesh Karthik. It's Glenn Maxwell. And it's Josh Hazelwood, apart from Hasaranga. But suppose in the next match, Virat Kohli comes good. Then, hey, in any case, I think he's been a lucky mascot for them. So, that's that's the, the good part for uh, RCB that Virat has. They persisted with him. They've not benched him or kept him aside. He is not asked to be kept out. And they're still there fighting on. Uh, of the other teams, I think Delhi Capitals is an extremely exciting team. So And so to Punjab. Suddenly, after Johnny Berstow fi- finding form and Liam Livingston, these guys, have, you know, they've got some bionic batsmen in their ranks. So, one of them getting into the playoffs will add a lot of flavor. But as of now, it seems to me that, you know, it's difficult to pick all four. As we know, there's a lot of suspense still. But Gujarat Titans are, is there. And Lucknow Super Giants, I think, will just kind of sneak will through. It. Will, will make it. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll have to find out about that sooner than later. And we'll have a much, much deeper dive in what the final four 
stacks up to be like. Meanwhile, let's take a look at what's happening around the world of sport with the football roundup. Here's Somil Arora. Oh, well, Liverpool are having a dramatic season all the way through. They've won the League Cup. And in this past week, they've also gone in and won the FA Cup in the most dramatic fashion. They had this final against Chelsea that I was building up for weeks right here on Sports Weekly. And I said that this will be an intense game. Chelsea were struggling all the way through. They have ownership problems. Of course, they've found a new owner right now, which is a good thing for them in the long run. But they were a team that lacked the same confidence that they had in the first half of the season. But still, in the FA Cup, they were able to deliver some great performances. And in the final at Wembley, with the atmosphere all primed up, they delivered an exciting nil-nil draw. And you might be saying, exciting nil-nil draw? What's that all about, Somal? But so many chances were created. This match was... Intense all the way through. You could see that Liverpool wanted it so badly, even though they do have the Premier League to go out there and win, and also the Champions League final coming up very, very soon. But their intensity didn't go down. But unfortunately for them, Mohamed Salah has been injured. That's right. In the 30th minute of the game, Salah suffered a bit of an injury, and he's been a bit of a concern for Liverpool because they absolutely desperately want him for the Champions League final and also for the last couple of games of the Premier League where Liverpool could potentially have a chance for the title. More than that in a second. But after Salah's injury, Liverpool didn't die down, actually. Uh, in, in the past, with Salah gone, the, the mantle often used to fall on Sadio Mane and Roberto Firmino, and they work better as a trio rather than as a duo, right, at the end of the day. But Liverpool have had great reinforcements at the end of the day. Luis Diaz have been, has been doing a great job, and he was able to take up that role and create so many chances. But at the end, nil-nil, nobody scored. It went to extra time, and still there was no goal. And at the end, man, it came to penalties, and these penalties... They often get your heart racing, but I don't think it can get better than this one. Because at the start, we all thought that Sadio Mane would be a goal scorer, right? We knew that Sadio Mane could end up doing something special right here, as he's done so many times. But Mane missed. His goal was saved by Eduard Mendy, as Filiqueta also ended up missing. Thiago scored, Hammer scored, we saw Firmino scoring as well, also Barkley. But at the end, it all came down to the decisive penalty that was... Missed in a way by Mason Mount. At 5-5, Mason Mount missed his shot. And it came up to Simikas, the left back from Greece, who's been kind of filling in right now for Andy Robertson and doing a pretty handy job at that. But it was his job to convert that penalty and he did it so coolly and calmly. And this means that Liverpool are now on the way for the unprecedented quadruple of trophies. The League Cup is in the bag. The FA Cup is in the bag. The Premier League will... I'll get to that right away, actually, because it's been interesting. Manchester City dropped points this past week. They, they drew 2-2 to West Ham in, in my opinion, the second best game of the week after, of course, the FA Cup final. Because West Ham went up 2-0 uh, thanks to Jared Bowen's goals in the first half. And then City showed a great deal of courage to come back to draw 2-2. But at the end, it was a frantic match with both teams creating many, many chances and you could see the desperacy on City's faces and the way they played because they needed to win here. Of course, this is only one slip-up. They need to slip up again to make sure that Liverpool wins the title. But it's a slip-up nonetheless. And that's a big, big deal. Liverpool plays Southampton on Wednesday. If they win that game, their chances of winning the Premier League, of course, get better right at the end of the day. But they still need City to slip up in their next match. And City will be playing... They will be playing Aston Villa on Sunday. And Aston Villa have been a notoriously tricky team to play against. So, if City wins that game, regardless of whatever happens to Liverpool, they will be the champions. But if Liverpool win their game against Southampton and City lose, well, things could go a bit more towards the mercy side. And they could end up with a triple. And speaking of the triple... The way to convert that to a quadruple would be in the UCL final. That's also going to come up in a couple of weeks against Real Madrid. So things are really exciting on that front. But otherwise, bigger results in the Premier League include, of course, Brentford beating Everton 2-3. And wow, Everton are almost on the edge of relegation right now. They've got a tough match coming up very, very soon against Crystal Palace. And they are notoriously tricky opponents. And then in the last game of the season, they've got Arsenal coming up. So for them... No points are guaranteed right now. And they could well go down to the championship. And, well, this is a scary, scary thought for all the Everton fans. And considering that they've got a new stadium coming in, considering that they've put in a lot of money into this club to invest it to get it to this level, 
things are a bit bit scary right now and for Everton bad times may be coming all the way through but that's all from the Premier League there's other news that Paul Pogba might end up going to Juventus there's news that Eric Ten Hag is going to start next week because he really wants to sort things up sort things up I'm sorry at Manchester United and he's starting I think almost a month in advance because he was expected to take over after Ralf Ralf Ragnick left but he's doing it right away as this current season is going on so lots of fun things happening in the Premier League the season is coming to an end the battle is super exciting and at this stage you can't tell which one of Liverpool or City is going to win this one but let's wait and watch let's have fun with it right here on Sports Weekly well, next up on the Formula One calendar is a trip to Spain for the Spanish GP. And I know what you're thinking. It's usually a very, very dull race. That's because the Spanish GP circuit at Catalonia is very tight, very twisty. For Formula One cars, that is. That is because Formula One cars are very wide and very long in a way. So passing becomes a bit tricky over there. But I get a strong feeling that this race will be different because this time there are lots of upgrades that are going to be coming in. And now, Upgrades come in every single year at Spain, that is correct, because that's because it's the closest circuit to all the bases for all the Formula 1 teams, so they can just transport their goods and their upgrades very, very cheaply to the first race of the European season, right? So that just helps out in that sense. So teams will be coming up with completely new cars, not in terms of liveries, but just in terms of how the aerodynamic parts perform. And this means that the pecking order could be completely different. Right now, we've seen Red Bull dominate in the last couple of races, but for all we know, Ferrari could come back on top. For all we know, Mercedes could have a great upgrade. So that's going to be a big plus point as well. All the midfield teams are going to be bringing new parts, especially Aston Martin, who apparently are coming up with a whole new car altogether because they just didn't like the philosophy of the one that they've been using for the first few races of the season. So lots of chopping and changing could happen. And in terms of the spectacle, don't expect much. These Formula 1 cars, yes, they can follow. But the passing zones at Spain are very, very tight. So I get a feeling that passing might not be the most uh, might not be the most frequent of occurrences in this weekend. But lots of strategy calls will be made. And I get a feeling that this race will be closer than before. A lot more contact could happen because these drivers are getting more comfortable with these cars and they are feeling more racy. And at the top, the battle between Verstappen and Leclerc is just going to be absolutely brilliant because they've been fighting tooth and nail for all the races this year. Whenever Verstappen, has, whenever Verstappen has finished, I'm sorry, he's ended up winning the race. And for Leclerc, it's just the perfect time for a fight back. First race of the European calendar, new upgrades for Ferrari. It can't get better than this. But his teammate might also have a lot on the cards because this is Carlos Sainz's home race. Same with Fernando Alonso, that is. But for the first time in his career, Carlos Sainz is in a car that can win a Grand Prix on merit. And what if that first Grand Prix win is at home in Spain? There is a chance Ferrari might be going all guns blazing right here. But I guess we'll have to wait and watch. We'll have to wait and watch to see what McLaren end up doing. Are they going to come up to the top of the field once again? What happens to Mercedes? Do they find a fix to their problems altogether? And at the end, what about Haas and Alfa Romeo? Because they've been underperforming a little bit in comparison to the quality of their car. But with new upgrades, do they still be as fast as they were in the first few races of the year? It's going to be a fun one this weekend and it's European time. So it should be very convenient in India, right? So probably around 6.30 Indian time on Sunday. So don't miss that one. It's going to be a fun one right here. And I'll be back next week for the review of the Spanish Grand Prix right here on Sports Weekly. Thanks everyone for joining us. Like we reminded, please remember to subscribe or follow and rate us. It just helps us do better. Until next time, this is me signing off. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Fantastic. We'll catch up next week, by which time, of course, we'll know which teams are in the playoffs, apart from Gujarat Titans, and uh, which teams have been eliminated. We'll also know whether Virat Kohli has finally struck form or not. Mm-hmm.